good afternoon, early evening to all of you. I hope you all are doing well. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Um, so earlier today, as I was praying and I'm asking the Lord, how can I give you glory today? Um, and I was asking him for a word for his people and all glory to God, right? He, he is just so amazing. He is the God of all wisdom and, and his rebuke is done in such a gracious way, but it's something we desperately need, right? We need his rebuke. We need his correction. We need his discipline. We need him to point out things that we cannot see with our natural eyes, right? Because he is spirit. And so he sees things that we cannot see that are coming up against us. Um, and so I just want to share with you, this is going to be Proverbs um, chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 10. Um, he had me go through, read it, meditate on it. And then he took me through verse by verse. And he just started pouring out a wisdom that is not my own, a revelation that is not my own. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I can't wait to share it with you anyway, um, uh, because I was blessed just putting it together. So the first one, the first verse is a soft answer turns away wrath, a gentle response, a compassionate reply, one that seeks to understand rather than correct. That, that's what the, the Lord followed up with in response to a soft answer turns away wrath wrath. A harsh word stirs up anger. This is what the Lord said next. When the gospel is preached, it must be done in love. The purpose is to win souls, not prove everyone wrong. When you tell someone that their religion is false without ever trying to understand why they believe what they believe, so that you, you can then share the reason for the hope that is in you, you are insulting them and minimizing every experience they've had since they first believed. It is offensive. Would you want to listen to someone who just offended you? Would you not be more open and receptive to someone who approached you in love, trying to gain a better understanding of why you are so firm in your faith? You cannot discredit and disregard the experiences of another. That would not be wise. The first step to becoming wise is admitting there are many things you do not understand or have the answers for. The next verse, the tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouth of fools pours out folly. And the Lord said, do not be hasty in a response. Instead of focusing so much on where you differ, focus instead on where you share similar beliefs and principles. Focus on the things they do that are commendable. This way they don't feel personally attacked just because you disagree. Even disagreement should be handled with graciousness and a tender heart. This is why it is so important to be led by my spirit and not the impulses of your flesh. Words spoken from a judgmental heart are more harmful than they are helpful. Sometimes the wisest thing you can say is nothing. Learn to listen and restrain your desire to respond to, sorry, to respond or to prove your point. Proving your point without a compassionate ear profits no one. The next verse is, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. He said, if nothing is concealed from my sight, I have become acquainted with all of your ways. I know when your intentions are good and when they are not, even when you don't. I know what motivates you to do the things you do. I know the intentions behind the things you say, do, and don't do. Nothing is concealed from my all-seeing eyes. I can see into your heart. I know what's there. Who knows your heart better than I do? 
I must judge righteously according to what you have allowed to live in it. Your works would always be evil if it wasn't for the blood of my son. Even the good things you do have the wrong motives. Verse 4. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. The Lord said again, my people should be approached with compassion. Gentleness is a fruit of my spirit, as is self-control. The tongue is a flame of fire, a world of iniquity, when wielded as a weapon, when boasting of your own efforts, when praising your neighbor with empty flattery, and giving compliments only so you can be praised in return. But a gentle tongue brings life to the hearer, which is why a kind word can lift the heaviness of heart to those who are anxious and troubled, restless, and not at peace. The spirit brings life and peace, so restrain your tongue, bridle it if necessary, guard it from sinning against me by insulting those made in my image. Let my spirit speak through you. I am the God of the living. Do not speak death over my people in an attempt to warn them of the wrath to come, telling them they are going to hell. How do you know? Are you God? Have you seen their name blotted out of my book? I know who will receive me. You, however, do not. Count yourself as fools to become wise. There is wisdom in admitting what you don't know. The Lord led me to look up the word perverseness in Greek, diastrepho. It means to pervert, twist, distort, misinterpret, corrupt, make crooked or turn away that means and this is what he said next that means a distorted or misinterpreted truth can cause lasting damage and turn people away from the faith this also includes a distorted or corrupted delivery that comes from a prideful or self-righteous heart this too can be damaging because even if your intentions are good the iniquity in your heart can cause you to look down on my people making evil assessments without knowing that your words have become condemning, not convicting. I convict, but who are you to condemn when your righteousness without my blood is filthy rags? A fool despises his father's instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is prudent. The Lord said the biggest mistake anyone can make is making the assumption when choosing whether or not to heed my instruction that says to themselves, God would never say that. If my understanding is unsearchable, how are you so convinced of what I would or wouldn't ever say? You only know my thoughts when I reveal them to you. If my ways are higher than the heavens and my thoughts are much greater than yours, who are you to place limits on what I would and wouldn't do? Though my very nature is love, am I not also a God of justice and just measurements? Have I no right to get angry or execute judgment as I see fit? Heeding my reproof is the wisest thing you could ever do. But some of you ignore it because you have discredited the vessel. I chose to deliver it. You ignore it, convinced that I have not spoken because of who it came through. But I can speak through anyone, anywhere, anytime. And it is your pride that decides to refuse my correction because of where it's coming from. In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure, but trouble befalls the income of the wicked. Then the Lord said, for where your heart is, there your treasure will be. Earthly treasures are here one day and gone the next. Your hope is that they will bring you comfort. And in the moment they do, but it never lasts. I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. When you seek first my kingdom, and my righteousness. There is a reciprocity that happens 
as you are seeking me and making me a priority. I will make you my priority. I will attend to your needs. When your actions are favorable, my favor will follow you. There is blessing in obedience, but that is not why you obey. You're storing up treasures in heaven. However, the wicked accumulate wealth just to watch it slip through their fingers and pass on to someone else. You cannot serve two masters. You will love one and hate the other. Those who serve me without expectation will lack no good thing. Those who give expecting nothing in return will receive an even greater reward. For I love a cheerful giver and one who is not reluctant to pour out of their abundance to provide for those in need. Verse 7. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, not so the heart of fools. The Lord said, earthly wisdom is useless in my kingdom. Fools cannot be taught. Fools cannot be corrected. Fools have all the answers. Fools are not interested in listening to the opinions of others. Fools speak many words, but when it comes to listening, they have no skill at all. Fools have no fear of me. Fools say there is no God. Wherever there is wisdom, you can find my spirit. Wisdom comes from above. Wisdom supersedes worldly intellect. Wisdom shuts the mouth of the most brilliant scholar. Wisdom cannot be found in man-made books devoid of my spirit or classrooms devoid of my presence. I give wisdom liberally to those who ask me, and they will never be put to shame for asking. Those who fear me are always growing in wisdom, and those who don't are not wise. The next verse says, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves him who pursues righteousness. The Lord said, There is no greater sacrifice apart from the one of my son than one who is fully surrendered, submitted, obedient, and walking in my will. Righteousness should be pursued, sought out, and longed after. Like a deer pants for water on a hot day, so will my children who have been born of me, born of my spirit, seek after and practice my righteousness. But the sacrifice of the wicked is a stench, not a fragrance. Their offering is corrupt and defiled as if they brought a sick animal full of disease and laid it on the altar. Shall I take pleasure in such things? I will not. They honor me with their lips, with hearts devoid of love. Those who do not know love do not know me. They praise me with their mouths, but in their hearts are cursing and bitterness and every vile thing. The, sacri the sacrifice I desire is a heart that longs to do my will, who has through their obedience made themselves an instrument of righteousness. That sacrifice is and will always be acceptable and pleasing in my sight. Verse 10. There is severe discipline for him who forsakes the way. Whoever hates reproof will die. The Lord prompted me to pull up the word reproof in the Greek. It means lecture, admonition, rebuke, to expose, convict, show to be guilty, discipline, show fault, or tell a fault. Then the Lord said this, so what does it mean to hate reproof? It means to shut your ears to my discipline and correction. It means to ignore my instruction as if your way is better. It means to shun my counsel, to take offense at my rebuke, shrug off my conviction, and disregard my warnings. It means to refuse accountability, to be blinded to a fault even when it's sold to you. A heart that refuses to be taught or corrected. Those who hate these things will die. Pride comes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Be not wise in your own eyes. Do not think too highly of yourselves. I exalt the humble, but I resist the proud. You must decrease and I will increase. Be filled with my spirit, which is meek and lowly. 
humble yourselves under my mighty hand. Continue serving me from a place of reverence and adoration. That way you will not be enticed by the allure of human praise. Let this reproof be like oil for your heads. Do not refuse it. I chastise those I love as only a loving father should.